The light that travels through the shades, you know, if I, if I keep my eyes shut, um, it still doesn't make as much sense. But even with my eyes closed, in, in sunlight and with lights and things, it still hurts. I don't wear shades, I have actually been known to cave under, go caving with my shades on, but I break them. So I'm trying to remember to take them off, otherwise I end up having to get yet another pair. I don't mind caving in the dark with no light on. But, I'm actually scared of the dark, so I don't mind doing it, providing I know I can turn, turn, my, turn my light on, you know, so occasionally I'll turn it on, I might turn it back off, I might leave it, it doesn't matter, but I'm actually scared of the dark, so as long as I know I can turn the light on, then I'm quite happy to be completely in the dark. If, if I was to try and turn my light on and it didn't work, it would really phase me and I wouldn't, I wouldn't be a happy chap, because uh, I'm scared of the dark, silly as it sounds. So, Graham, you're, you're registered blind. Yeah. But what does that actually mean? Well, out of the total people in this country that are registered blind, the last figure I heard was either three or four percent of those are actually totally blind. It means that they can't see anything. They have they, they can't recognise there being a light switched on. There's nothing actually registers through their eyes at all. For me, like the other 96, 97 percent, you have some awareness. I have what they call light perception, so I can tell if it's light or dark. Some people may have a little bit of useful, a tiny little bit of useful sight, but there's a full spectrum in between being totally blind and being what they class as partially sighted. And partially sighted can be, well, literally that, it's partially sighted. It's not uncommon for people who are partially sighted to use no, no aids of any description, to need very little in the way of modifications for their life to just go on normally. You, you go diving as well, don't you, Graham? Can you tell me a bit about that. Yeah, I go diving. I started diving after I was registered blind, but before I lost all my peripheral vision, because I, I still had some peripheral vision in those days. So I learned to dive. I even became a dive master. I actually worked with a couple of instructors. I used to uh, assist them teaching technical dive equipment, rebreathers, uh, mixed gas courses. And most of my diving, especially the deeper stuff that I do these days, I still do solo. Um, 
I, I'm able underwater to be able to find my way around in dark water. So I love diving in the UK because of that. Um, because you get reflection from objects when you shine lights. So I carry quite a lot of light with me um, so that I'm able to actually get the reflection back from things to know if there's anything in front of me or... Um, people quite often ask me how deep do you know, you know, how do you know how deep you are and how much decompression you've got to do. I've dived my equipment since before I lost my sight. So I've got used to that equipment. Um, and I have a, a very easy practice for knowing the depth I'm at. Um, before I jump in the water, I ask the skipper what's the maximum depth of the wreck. Oh, what's the maximum depth of the seabed? What's the depth of the top of the wreck? You know, if it's, if it's 60 metres to the wreck and 70 metres to seabed, I know I can't go past 70 metres. You know, if I'm on the seabed, I'm at 70 metres. So it's pretty simple, really. And the rest of it's just guess work and memory.
I can pull it up from the leg and just pass it across then. If you want to, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't see anything now, look at my eyes up. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that makes two of us. Yeah. <laughs>